Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm in Atlanta and I'm about to board a flight to LaGuardia and you're coming along with me. LaGuardia is currently landing on runway 22 and the winds are about runway heading. I'm not sure if we're gonna make a right turn or a left turn to get to the runway, but my seat is on the right hand side of the aircraft today. Let's see what happens. Today I'll be on Delta Flight 791, departing at 3.30 p.m. from gate B24. Let's head on downstairs to the rainforest where I'll ponder my situation more. All right, as I wait down here for my flight, I'm thinking about a couple of things about what's gonna happen today. So I'm not 100% sure when we land on runway 22 if we're gonna do right traffic or left traffic to the runway. It just depends. Now, if we do right traffic, there's always this strange new possibility that instead of flying up the Hudson River, we'll fly over Manhattan, and my seat is on the right-hand side of the airport plane and that may reduce the view of Manhattan. I don't know. If we fly to runway 22 via left traffic, Manhattan will be on the left hand side of the aircraft. I'll have a great view of Kennedy Airport and then we'll turn around over Long Island Sound and descend over the Bronx to runway 22. In any case, we will descend to runway 22 over the Bronx in short final, so that's pretty much a guarantee. It's just a question of will it be a right turn or left turn to the runway? I don't know yet. We'll make a right-hand turn to runway 22 if runway 13 is the designated departure runway. Departures off of runway 13 would take off to the east and would not conflict with us to the west. We'll make a left-hand turn to runway 22 if runway 31 is the designated departure runway. Departures off of runway 31 would take off to the west and would not conflict with us to the east. Let's head back up to the gate level to board an Airbus A321. Okay, I made it to the gate, Bravo 24 today. Isn't it just great when it says New York LGA? What a great feeling. I can't wait for the approach. And here's that A321 that's gonna take us up to LaGuardia. I'm about to board for one of the last times in the Diamond Group since I'll be losing this status next year due to Delta's new spending requirements. But I didn't even request an upgrade for this flight. I want my seat in the main cabin since the center of the seat is closer to the window. And I chose a seat in the back where I didn't have to worry about missing windows. Let's go to LaGuardia on this A321. Kind of by default, when the wind is coming from 220 degrees, I chose the right side of the plane just in case runway 13 is the departure runway when we land and we fly up the Hudson River. I'm anxious about this because way too often these days, we get vectored right up Manhattan's Fifth Avenue, so famous icons like the Empire State Building are right below the airplane. And who knows if a slight shift in wind causes the departure runway to be runway 31 and we fly east of the airport to land. I won't see Manhattan at all then. Just like this 31-year-old A320, the much younger A321 that I'm on now will be pushing back by a tug like this one. Here's our route to LaGuardia this afternoon. It's not a very long flight, and thousands of people are flying on this route today. With the ramp clear behind us, we push back on time onto ramp number two, the ramp between the A and B concourses, which is directly above the rainforest that I showed you earlier in this video. The tug pushes us back so that our nose faces south because we'll be taxiing out of the ramp to the south to take off on a southern complex runway. Runway 9 left. Once near the exit to the ramp, we contact ground control for taxi clearance. But there's a slight traffic issue. We can't take the quickest path to the runway today because it's blocked by planes ahead of us waiting to take off. A right turn to the runway would be the most efficient, but we need to get to the back of the line, so we made a left turn as instructed by ground control. We passed by a few aircraft on taxiway Mike that were in the lineup to take off, and then made a U-turn in taxiway Lima 5 to join the lineup and the line to the runway moved very quickly. Atlanta is a very efficient airport, and departing aircraft are often issued takeoff clearance closely behind the previous departure, so we did not spend a lot of time in the lineup at all. But before I knew it, we were handed off to the local controller who had us line up on runway 9 left at the intersection of taxiway Mike 2, which means that we'll have slightly less than the full runway length of 12,390 feet for takeoff. As we turn the corner, we can see a Delta A350 on final approach to a parallel runway, runway 9 right. Runway 9 right is the landing runway and is being used exclusively for this purpose. Once we start our takeoff, we'll see this A350 landing, and as that aircraft slows down while we speed up, there will be a point where we'll both be at the same exact speed. You'll see that in a few moments. Since this airport is very efficient, we were given takeoff clearance before we even came to a stop.
As we fly runway heading for a bit following the standard departure procedure, we eventually made a left turn to the northeast, which points our aircraft directly toward our destination city. Until we reached our cruising altitude, there were scattered clouds, but the clouds thinned out while flying over North Carolina, allowing passengers on the right side of the plane to get a great view of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, a hub for American Airlines. And just past the airport, the tall buildings of the city of Charlotte were very easy to see from this high altitude. Seeing these skyscrapers made me wonder if we'll be seeing even taller skyscrapers on the approach to LaGuardia. The great news at this point is that arrivals to runway 22 this evening are indeed passing to the west of LaGuardia near Manhattan as runway 13 is the departure runway. With no forecasted change in the wind direction, it looks like this will continue on for the rest of the evening. The uncertain and nerve-wracking thing is that I have no idea if the approach controller will have us fly up the Hudson or over Manhattan. I'll just have to wait and see what happens until we get there. We descended over central New Jersey via the quarry arrival procedure and then checked in with New York Approach Control at 13,700 feet. Let's listen in. New York Delta 791 out of 1370, sending the quarry 4 with November 289. Delta 791, New York Approach, altimeter 3015 and maintain that airspeed. 3015, we're checked in now at the Approach Control Facility located in Nassau County, New York. The controller told us to maintain our current airspeed and we'll continue descending along the published arrival procedure. Note that sometimes I may be talking over other transmissions to other pilots, so this frequency, but I'll ensure that all transmissions to our flight are heard at full volume. Listening to transmissions to other flights of this frequency provides situational awareness, allowing us to know how busy the airspace ahead is and possibly what we can expect. I'm especially excited by this next transmission to a Brickyard flight up ahead. Brickyard 4342, proceed direct to the Verrazano Bridge, 5 Edge River North. All right, direct to the river bridge and up the river, Brickyard 4342. This is music to my ears. This Brickyard flight is well ahead of us, approaching Brooklyn, and was just told by the controller to proceed to the Verrazano Bridge, then to follow the Hudson River north. This means that all passengers sitting on the right side of that plane will get a great Manhattan view. Well, this isn't short for that flight. It's not 100% guaranteed that the controller will tell us to do the same, but he's also telling the next aircraft on the arrival to do the same. Let's listen into this beautiful transmission. Southwest 894, descend to maintain 4000. Proceed direct to the Verrazano Bridge, follow the Hudson River North. Okay, down to 4000, Verrazano Bridge, Hudson River North, Southwest 894. We're looking at McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey down there, but in a few minutes, will we see the skyscrapers of New York City? So far, two planes ahead of us will get the dream route to LaGuardia. We're still high up and not at a point where we can be considered by the approach controller to fly any particular route over New York yet. Once we get closer in, the controller will have a better sense of where to vector us. I'm just hoping that at the last moment, he doesn't just give us a heading to fly that might put us at a point where I won't be able to see Manhattan from the right side of the plane. Approach control is not only working airplanes that are coming from the direction we're coming from, but there are also arrivals from the west that need to be vectored to the same place we need to be over lower New York Bay before proceeding north toward the city. There's also a flow of arrivals coming from the north, but since LaGuardia is landing on runway 22, those planes can just fly straight into the runway. They're actually being handled by a separate controller. We won't get clearance to a lower altitude until a few more minutes, which indicates that we still have some time to go. In the distance, to put things into perspective, you can see the Jersey Shore, and beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. The shoreline of New Jersey will be visible for the entire time of New Jersey until it becomes Sandy Hook. By the way, this approach is 100% in real time, and it won't be hitting the stop record button until we're on the ground at LaGuardia, so you can get a sense of what it takes to bring an aircraft into a major New York City airport from an air traffic perspective. Speaking of air traffic, let's listen into another Delta flight checking in behind us, a Southwest flight luckily being told to fly up the Hudson, that new Delta flight given a speed assignment, an American flight being told to descend further, and the Southwest flight being told to change frequencies. There's a lot coming on here. Approach Delta 967 11 5, Corey at 10 with November. Delta 967, your approach, altimeter 3015. 3015, so 967. To the Southwest 3806, proceed direct to the Verrazano Bridge, follow the Hudson River North. Proceed direct to the Verrazano Bridge, follow the Hudson River North, Southwest 3806. Delta 967, maintain your present speed or better. Present speed or better, Delta 967, we're at 300. Thank you. American 1344, do you to maintain 8,000? 8,000, American 1344. Southwest 894, contact approach, 134.9. 134.9, Southwest 894. 
That Southwest flight, which will fly up the Hudson, is handed off to another controller handling flights going up the Hudson and turning back around to land on runway 22, as well as arrivals from the north. The current controller is too busy to handle all that, so the airspace is divided. We're now approaching some of the busiest airspace in the entire world, so roles are divided amongst multiple people on the ground. We'll be told to switch to that frequency further on, but for now, it's time for us to receive clearance to a lower altitude. Delta 791, you said to maintain 8,000. We're told to descend to 8,000 feet, our first lower altitude assignment by this controller. We're still following the Corey 4 arrival procedure, so all of our headings are based upon the waypoints and navigation lanes that are published on the arrival procedure. The Corey 4 arrival in general has a northeast heading, which points us toward the five boroughs of New York City. And if we were seated in the cockpit, we'd be able to see the five boroughs straight ahead. The Corey 4 arrival meets up with the Milton 4 arrival from the west, just south of New York City, at a fix called Apple, likely named after the Big Apple. For the most part, aircraft simply follow the Corey 4 and Milton 4 arrivals until before reaching Apple, where the controller gives specific instructions to break off the arrival procedure and provides radar vectors. However, while on the procedure, most of the instructions that we receive are altitude assignments and speed restrictions. You'll find that as we get closer to the airport, we'll be given more and more headings to fly so that we can fit in behind and between other aircraft on the final approach course to runway 22. That will be handled by a separate controller controlling the airspace over the boroughs. But for now, we just continue along the Corey 4 arrival and descend as instructed by the current controller, one of two. Have you noticed that the population density has increased since we checked in with the approach controller? Clearly, we're approaching a large metropolis. However, after flying over New Jersey, we'll fly over water before flying by the extremely populated New York City borough of Brooklyn. And after that, it will be homes and buildings most of the way down to the runway. I can't wait to get there, and I'm fairly excited knowing that aircraft ahead of us are flying northbound on the Hudson right now. I hope this clearance comes true for us in the next few minutes. I know that the flight deck crew has the Verrazano Bridge in sight right now. The visibility is very good. For now, it's time for us to get clearance down to the next lower altitude assignment, 4,000 feet. Delta 791, you said to maintain 4,000. 4,000, Delta 791. 4,000 feet is a very exciting altitude to get clearance to because it's at 4,000 feet where we'll be flying northbound in New York City. So we're getting closer and closer. We won't descend below 4,000 feet until around Central Park under the control of the next controller. For now, it's a waiting game. We're just waiting for the controller to tell us to fly to the Verrazano Bridge and follow the Hudson River north. All the other planes ahead of us are doing it, so why shouldn't we? It better happen. I can't tell you how many times in the last year I strategically chose a seat on the right side of the plane when this approach pattern was in use, and we just flew directly over Manhattan. All I can do now is just wait for the next clearance to us. So in the meantime, I'll take in the view that I see here. This is the upper end of Monmouth County, New Jersey. In the distance, we see the northern end of the Jersey Shore, and in a moment, we'll see the north side of the county as it borders Sandy Hook Bay. The bay is formed by Sandy Hook, a six-mile-long barrier spit, which we'll see continuing along the shoreline of the Atlantic Ocean. In the bay, you'll see Naval Weapons Station Earl, a U.S. Navy base, and its three-mile-long pier. It's nice to see, but I'm just waiting for the approach controller to tell us to fly to the nearby Verrazano and proceed up the Hudson. When is this clearance coming? Will it come? I wait. Delta 967, descend and maintain 4,000. 4,000, Delta 971. Southwest 941, descend and maintain 8,000. Not 8,000, Delta 941. Endeavor 4800, contact approach 134. Alas, New York approach has a message for us. Delta 791, proceed direct to the Verrazano Bridge, follow the Hudson River North. Direct to the bridge, Hudson North, Delta 791. Yes, we got the clearance I wanted. My seat selection on the right side of the plane will pay off now. The pilot is pointing the nose of the aircraft to the middle of the Verrazano Bridge, and after that, he needs to follow the Hudson River northbound. This means the highly anticipated view of Manhattan for passengers seated on the right side of the plane will happen. We're about to enter the airspace of the second approach controller, so it's time for a handoff to him now. Delta 791, contact approach 134.9. 134.9, Delta 791. 
And here's our first sight of land in New York City, Breezy Point, which is part of the Barrier Island of Queens. In the cockpit, the flight deck crew is changing frequencies to 134.9, the final approach control frequency as Coney Island in Brooklyn comes into sight. Let's check in with New York Approach Control for the second time. First Delta 791, leveling 4000. Delta 791, you're correct. We checked in at 4,000 feet, and the controller just said, Roger. The instruction for the previous controller still remains valid. Once we pass over the Verrazano Bridge, we need to follow the Hudson northbound. This controller has been briefed by the previous controller that will be doing so, so for now, there are no more commands that need to be issued to us. The area of land closest to us is the very populated borough of Brooklyn, and as we approach the Verrazano Bridge, I'm going to pan the camera down to catch a small glimpse of its eastern stanchion. It's hard to see something when you're directly over it, but if you follow the road leading toward the bridge, you can see the stanchion for a very brief moment. Any turns that you see us make from now until the next command are simply the pilot turning the plane so that we follow the Hudson River. Before reaching Manhattan, we'll continue to look at Brooklyn. Beyond Brooklyn in the distance is the borough of Queens, and just above Jamaica Bay in the top middle of the screen is Kennedy Airport. This approach keeps us safely separated from flights to and from JFK. Newark Airport is on the left side of the plane, and we're at a safe distance from its flights too. And as we know from what we heard on the previous approach control frequency, we're doing what aircraft ahead of us just did. As we aim for the center of the Hudson River, the water that we see down below is part of the upper bay of New York City. And in a moment, we're going to fly past Governor's Island, then we'll see what I've been waiting for all day a bird's eye view of Manhattan from 4,000 feet. To make the view even better, the sun is about to set in the west on the other side of the airplane, and it's casting its light onto the tall buildings. We can see that effect on the buildings right now in Brooklyn, but as we pass by Manhattan, we'll be closer and only around 2,000 feet higher than some of the tallest buildings down there. This is going to be a sight to behold. We're in a perfect position, and the best part of one of the greatest approaches in the world is about to happen right now. Sierra 4800, the center maintains 3000, and reduce speed to 180. Sierra 3000, and speed 180. American 1344, turn right into 130, the center maintains 2000. Right 130, the center maintains 2000. To help sequence us in behind other traffic, the controller is going to give us a slight turn to the right. Delta 791, flighting 040. Heading 040, Delta 791. American 1344, Captain Apollo, Zufon, 3 miles out of 1500 at Southwest Boeing. Now that we're closer to the airport, we're told to descend to a lower altitude. Delta 791, descend to maintain 3,000. Descend 3,000, Delta 791. What a view of Central Park that was. In the distance, we can see our destination airport, LaGuardia. We're currently flying in the opposite direction of landing. When we passed by Midtown, the controller had us discontinue following the Hudson and fly heading 040, which is 180 degrees in the opposite direction of the landing runway, runway 22, which heads 220 degrees. The controller will only issue us right-hand turns around the Bronx to get lined up with the runway, and today traffic is not too heavy, so we turn around rather quickly. Here's one of the turns being issued by New York Approach Control. Delta 791, flight in 050, speed 180. 050, speed 180, Delta 791. As we pass by Yankee Sierra Stadium on the other side of the Harlem River in the Bronx, we make a 10 degree turn to the right and slow down to 180 knots. This heading and speed is determined by how close we are to the aircraft ahead of us. Often pilots are asked to remain higher at this point and extend this leg of flight well into Westchester County, often up to White Plains, New York. But with light traffic today, we'll be turning within a 10 mile radius of the airport, remaining in the Bronx the entire time. The controller is about to have us turn further to the right to an east heading of 90 degrees. This will bring us closer to the final approach course. Delta 791, flight in 090. 090, Delta 791. The right turn is part of what's called a right base leg. The final turn before we line up at the runway, and it's all in the Bronx. That's Bronx Park in the middle of the screen. We're basically going around it until we're lined up with the runway. As we turn, try to keep LaGuardia Airport in sight for as long as possible. It's out there on the other side of the East River near Rikers Island. 
Today, we'll be making a visual approach to runway 22, and we'll actually be following another aircraft ahead of us to the runway. We'll proceed on this heading for a bit longer, enjoying the view of the Bronx as we wait for the controller to issue another command for us. He's focusing on the plane in front of us, ensuring that we don't get too close. And he's also working traffic behind us up the Hudson River, as well as get aircraft out, that are coming from the north the that will be flying straight into runway 22. He's got a lot to do, and now he sees that spacing is good for us, so we're issued a turn to 130 degrees, and we can descend to 2,000 feet. Delta 791, flight 130, descend to maintain 2,000. 7130, descend 2,000, Delta 791. Now the controller is going to point out our traffic that we're following, an RJ in our 2 o'clock position at 3 miles. Delta 791, RJ to follow 2 o'clock, 3 miles. The controller will now tell us to follow that traffic, reduce our speed, and we'll be clear for the approach, and we can contact the control tower at LaGuardia Airport. Sorry, Delta 791. Delta 791, follow the traffic, clear visual approach to 2, and uh, reduce speed to 160. 160, clear visual, to 2, Delta 791. Delta 791, contact LaGuardia Tower, good night. Tower, good night, 791. I'm going to zoom the camera into LaGuardia Airport's runway 22 as we check in with the control tower at the airport. Tower, Delta 791, visual 22. 791, LaGuardia Tower, number 260, not overtake, one departure. First one, 160, Delta 791. We're not yet clear to land on runway 22. We're turning toward the airport after being cleared for a visual approach, but we have a 60 knot overtake of the traffic in front of us as reported by the control tower, so our pilot said he was slowing to 160 knots to help increase separation. The controller also said one departure. This means that will be one departure off of runway 13, which intersects with our runway before we land. When both runways are in use at this airport, arrivals and departures will always cross paths because of the intersecting runways. Here comes our landing clearance now for the tower. Our pilot didn't hear her at first, so she repeated it again, mentioning that there will be a departure off the intersecting runway 13 prior to our touchdown. This is important for the pilot to know since he'll be seeing a plane cross the landing runway from right to left. Remember that at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that when runway 13 is the departure runway, arrivals from the south have to make a right-hand turn onto the final approach course, and that's exactly what we did. That aircraft will take off on runway 13 and will take off in the airspace away from Manhattan on the east side of the airport. Now, just to make sure, our pilot checks back in with the tower to confirm that we're clear to land. Tower 791, can you confirm landing clearance? 791, wind 2008, on the 22, tower to land. Clear to land 22, 791. Referencing our aircraft on a two and a half mile final, the tower will now issue takeoff clearance to an American Airlines aircraft waiting on runway 13. American 2068, traffic on a two and a half mile final. Wind 200 at 9, runway 13, flight to takeoff. Quick takeoff, runway 13, American 20. A Delta flight behind us will now check in, and the previous arrival to runway 22 will be told to clear the runway. Start of the 967, visual 22. 967, LaGuardia Tower number 2, wind 209, runway 22, fire to land. 22, clear to land, another 967. Number 4800, turn left, turn Bravo, ground point 7, one. Left Bravo, turn left, there, 4800. We're now on final approach to runway 22. The runway ahead of us is clear, and the aircraft taking off on runway 13 has passed our intersection. There's no reason why we can't land. The final approach course is ours, and the runway is ours. The last few moments of the airborne portion of the flight takes us over the East River between the Bronx and Queens. This portion of the East River is the same East River that borders the east side of Manhattan. In a few moments, we'll be overflying the runway 22 approach light pier, which will be directly underneath our aircraft. Then, we'll settle down onto the beginning of runway 22, which is actually also on a pier. That's right, we'll be touching down with water under the runway, but as soon as we cross the intersection with runway 13, there will be solid ground underneath us. Let's land on runway 22. Slow down, the controller tells us to clear the runway to the left and contact ground control. We're told to take taxiway Bravo, which will bring us around in the opposite direction. Ground point 7 is an indication to switch radio frequencies to frequency 121.7. The controller there is responsible for traffic on the taxiways. Let's check in with the ground controller who will tell us which taxiways to take after Bravo. 
Delta 791, taxi Bravo Echo Alpha, and let me know. Bravo Echo Alpha, what is 791? We can take Bravo, then Echo, then Alpha to Terminal C. The controller also said, let me know. That means let him know if the gate we'll be parking at will be available. So, on another radio, not heard here, the pilot checks in with Terminal C ramp control to see if the proposed gate can accept us. It can, and we're told to take lane 15 to get there, so the pilot comes back to report this to ground control. Ground Delta 791, cleared in lane 15. Delta 791, uh, Bravo Echo Alpha. Bravo Echo Alpha, Delta 7. And like before, the controller once again says that we could take taxiways Bravo, Echo, and Alpha to get to lane 15 to go to the gate. What a great flight that was. I was hoping for this exact approach, and I got it. Although, I will admit, I was very anxious about what kind of instructions we'd be receiving by the controller up until the last moments. Far too often these days, aircraft are vectored up over the middle of Manhattan or sometimes up the East River, making the view of Manhattan impossible. Why the controllers are doing this more often is beyond me, but I'm grateful for the fact that today we were given a visual clearance to follow the Hudson River. Honestly, it's been over a year since that happened to me while on the right traffic approach to runway 22, so I'm grateful for New York Approach Control's commands today. All right, there's my A321 behind me. What a great approach to runway 22 today. And that's it. That's the river we just flew up to get to runway 22. Well, you know, you just never, never know nowadays. In the past, if we were landing at runway 22, I know I would have been guaranteed an approach to see Manhattan on the right-hand side of the aircraft. And today, it did happen. It just has not happened recently. I don't know why. All right, I'm going to end this video here at the beautiful Terminal C at LaGuardia Airport. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed that approach as much as I did. Thank you so much again. And remember that I'll be back again with another great video like this very, very soon. So if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below, hit the bell button, hit the like button, and I'll see you in an airport very, very soon. Thanks, everybody.